And now our host, Stephen Lee Morris. This week, we're joined by the founder of Zombie Joe's Underground in North Hollywood. Zombie Joe, welcome to Animal Farm. Thank you, Mr. Morris. Good to be here. Let's take from the beginning. I think most people in the LA theater community know who Zombie Joe's Underground is, that they know about you and they know what you do, but uh, we have viewers who are outside of LA. So um, I will say I've known you for at least two decades, maybe more. Uh, you were a, 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 young, a youngster, as comparatively speaking, <laughs> and you were, I know you, I was drawn to your theater because you have a very specific aesthetic, which is ghoulish, um, kind of monstrous and uh, highly stylized, highly choreographed. And simultaneously you were working, it seems like not, well, or coincidentally or not, I don't know, but you were working as a, as a funeral director at Cedar sinais uh, Mortuary and Cemetery. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Mount um, Sinai. <laughs> was there first? What did you do? What did you do there? Um, well, when we met back in, I think this was like in two thousand two, when we did that wonderful story. Thank you for that story, by the way. Back then, um, and um, I was working as a funeral director at Mount Sinai Memorial Parks. Um, they're they're in Hollywood Hills and also in Simi Valley. Um, and a funeral director is sort of like a, you know, almost like a party plan arranger, uh, uh, you know, we're there to, my job was to execute the package that was put together for the, for the deceased, you know, so um, we, I would um, meet with the family and uh, receive the flowers and uh, find out what their wishes were and how they wanted to do the service. Uh, and then I would be there, to, you know, to receive the guests and we would do the service and we go up to graveside and do the interment. So I would oversee that day, the day of the funeral, um, the package that they put together with like the pre need, or if it was, um, you know, an at need, which is, uh, uh, you know, like someone passes and then they find out, oh, they have, let's, let's, let's bury them at this place. And they, they would pay for this package. Um, and then I would, the day of the funeral, I would lead the service basically, would lead them through the beginning to the middle to the end of the service. Interesting. And then yeah. you said after Cedar Sinai, you had just mentioned before we started recording, mm -hmm. you'd mentioned that they had, you had gone on to other parts. Mm -hmm. Where else did you work after? Well, I left Mount Sinai. I sort of retired. I thought I was gonna maybe retire and just do theater. Retire at 25 or whatever you were. Yeah, like retire, like almost like in my 30s, mid 30s. Yeah. Oh no, early 30s, I think. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think I was I was looking at maybe retirement and just doing theater and investments and stuff. But um, I ended up really missing uh, doing funerals. I wasn't done yet. So um, I went to Hillside, which is... Um, the other these are jewish uh funeral parks yes yes um and i worked there for a little while um and then i also um worked for wells fargo as merchant services which was a really <clears throat> great job working for well the wells fargo family and i did that for a while really good money but really you know i mean it was it was challenging to keep the theater going and do well so eventually i had to sort of you know, get, get away from Wells Fargo because it was just, it really, it really takes your whole all day and all night. Of That's the terrible time. thing about jobs. They tend to do. <laughs> it's, it's, um, it's, it's, it's terrible. And it's also wonderful to be, to have that security, you know? And so, but also in between there, um, you know, we spent a couple of years in New York trying who's to bring, we? uh, well, Denise and I, and some of our company. Okay. This is Denise uh, Devon, your partner. Denise Devon. Yeah. Yes. yes. Uh, our lead director. She's still our lead director of our, of zombie Joe's underground. Um, we went to New York on a couple, uh, pilgrimages to work <clears throat> at St. Luke's actors, temple players. You did theater. really well there. I remember a couple of fantastic mm -hmm. reviews you guys got in the New York times. Yeah. Those reviews by Andy, were great and and um it actually yeah i mean it's so interesting like 
you know, I really do believe if if you can make it there, you can make it anywhere because New York really is, um, you know, doing sh- for us doing shows in New York off Broadway and then off off Broadway. And but yeah, and as you know, off Broadway from you doing your own shows at Cherry Cherry Lane, right? No, I was at the Abingdon Theater Company. Oh, OK. Uh, OK. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, um, you know, it's you know, as you know, like it's about partnership in New York yeah. because like you can you can kind of have a space out here for $1,500 a week or whatever. And, uh, um, but in New York, like theater space is like $25,000 a week. So it's, so yeah. we were out there on invitation um, from Ed Gaines. Um, oh yes. As he was um, in LA and he's both, he's kind of bi-coastal, but he, he is, he's, he's been an LA presence, Ed Gaines. Mm-hmm. And he just, but he's been, he's been pretty much, uh, He's been living in New York for the last 20 years um, and he has his theaters out here that um, that he operates still. But I w- we were out there an invitation from him as partnership to come into St. Luke's. We did children's theater. We did we did um, our Edgar Allan Poe shows, which had wonderful success out here. Thanks to you as, as well with that. Um, so, yeah, and we took two. We were there for a couple years. We went out there for a year. We came back to get things sorted here. I mean, we had our general manager run stuff here and I was producing online like while I was in New York. So it, I don't know how sustainable it was because I think if we had stuck it out in New York a little longer, I think it's just like when people come to LA, um, you know, you have to be willing to stick it out here for a while before you go back, you know, before you go back home. You have to be willing tenacity is the mother of inventions <laughs> i yeah. love that absolutely yeah. oh um, my god um yeah well, so yes so, so what were you you were drawn to the theater before you became a funeral director or, or was it the other way around what's the sequence there? you know mr morris not to seem um you know grandiose or anything about this but i've always been in the theater i've been in the theater since i could walk even before zombie joe's underground i mean I've always performed um, and worked behind the scenes is like, is, is like further than my memories, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, so by the time I, we kind of, I kind of sold everything and leased a space for our first um, underground. Um, I, I had already had a whole life in the theater as, as a kid and, and um, you know, I'd already been in the theater for, for, I guess it was like 2021 when I started, ZJU, but I'd already. So had, let's go. Let's you know. go there. Let's go there. Uh, you start mm-hmm. this theater because this is the beginning of your LA history. Mm-hmm. Um, you're 21. So what year is that? 92. Okay. Yeah. And um, <clears throat> you lease a space, and you mm-hmm. told me uh, you had you pull a company together because your company seems to be pretty tight it seems mm-hmm. i've just seen it in a number of shows i've seen there i've ripped the same faces keep cropping up so you clearly have a, a well, we company. offer we offer the bond of family that i'm not that i'm not sure other th- how other theaters operate but we offer the bond of family so we're very much a theater family mm-hmm. um i don't know how other theaters um, I'm sure there's other theaters that do the, do the same, but we're a non-dues paying um, theater family. And that's how we, we get the, the energy and the veracity to, to, and the passion to keep pushing forward, doing, you know, 20 so, to 30. Yeah. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be crass. <clears throat> you're, you're a non-dues paying company. You're, mm-hmm. re- you're leasing a theater in, Hol- in, in North Hollywood, which is mm-hmm. not cheap um you are how do you make ends meet is it it's not a huge theater we don't (laughs) you don't make it no 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 we do uh we do miraculously well every hollow so we do shows year round um our seasons january to december and um we do a lot of shows we'll have two three shows running simultaneously um of course not we're, we're just coming out of covid so Right. It's almost like we're restarting and stuff. And we came back with this big splashy show that we're doing uh, as sort of a gift and a welcoming to the community and that we're back. And, um, but we, um, we just, yeah, we survive on tickets that we live by the sword and we'll, and we'll die by the sword. You of, know, when of people the stop sales. coming, mm-hmm. no funding, if people stop no... coming, it's over for us. And you can't have union actors because you are not 
affiliated with union? union? Um, well, not we, a union. Work, we work with all sorts of actors. If someone is union, um, that's between them and Van du- it's between them and their union. Um, yeah. Uh, but yeah, we're completely unaffiliated. And, and uh, uh, but uh, so I, I'm thinking sometimes we do, but I won't know about it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that's a yes. terrible answer, but it's true. Um, well, in a way, you're, yeah. In a way, they can come and like a, so, you know, an actor can come to us. We also have agents that will send their actors to us to kind of, work their tools and, and work their craft and, and kind of like streamline their chops a little bit. Is this us. kind of you like could... your version of don't ask, don't tell is this is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'll, you know, yeah. And there's no, there's no secrets or anything. I just, the truth is some of this stuff, like I don't really even know, I don't ask them and they don't tell me. And, you yeah. know, as with any leader of a company, I guess the less I know, you know, for me, <laughs> the, the plays, the thing, yeah. um, they are, this is my family. We do get close as a company, but, um, you know, for me at the end of the day, it's about us making sure we have a show to play to, to sell tickets to. We're in the ticket business. You know, we sell yeah. tickets. Yeah, and- that's your own, that's your revenue stream. It sounds like you don't apply for County grants. You don't apply for. We did during this, uh, pandemic for the first time, unprecedented, uh, we did, uh, from district two gave us a little, a little bit of money. Um, and also District during two, mm-hmm. is that county or city? Uh, uh, county. Okay. Uh, oh yeah. It's well, it's, um, who's our district man, you know, anyway, so district two is not with that. So that covers the NoHo arts district. Um, and so they gave all the theaters, it was, it was a process, but we put on basically, uh, some, we gave some content, in return through the DCA and okay, um, that's city. That is city. Well, the money the money was filtered through the DCA, but it was it it was oh, but the it source came from of the, the coffers funding. of District Two. Got yeah, it. got it. Um, got it. And um, yeah, and that was a little chunk of money, but you know, uh, we paid rent during. I mean, we paid rent while we were all shuttered. I mean, all of us did. So, I, or actually, I don't know if that's true for all the theaters, but all the North Hollywood theaters led by nancy bianconi and lisa bianconi do you know do you know them do you know nancy and lisa i know of them i don't have so uh, there she's like the queen of our district and she's a huge part of keeping us all going i mean and she's also a dear friend and so um all the for uh, for every week we would meet like on thursday all the theaters and discuss what's going on when we can reopen and i think at some point this and this is last year um I think I think it was Lonnie Chapman Theater yep. mentioned, you know, hey guys, we're not going to be back till February, and we're like aghast, like there's no way. Little did we know it was going to be like May. <laughs> yeah. So um, it was quite a trying time, but we had each other. We had. I know that the other theaters, the the um, the nonprofit theaters with Gary and stuff, they were kind of they were all talking and stuff too, but. For, for the NoHo theaters, we definitely, it was a time for all of us to get close and to kind of share information of what was going on. So that was really nice during the pandemic. And unfortunately, not all of them uh, were able to keep their spaces, but I'm hoping right. that they'll pop up. They'll pop up once again, you know. Yeah. And to close, what you, you, you are coming back on the heels back, you're doing, yeah you're back and you're doing mm-hmm. kind of you did some online work which everybody did just simply for lack of alternatives mm-hmm. but now you're back live in a space but you're kind of adapting to the uh, to the restrictions and to public safety it's we have like. and we've we've adhered to all the all the local statutes and safety has come first we've actually been like the safest just as safe as doing a zoom show so urban death is kind of a, even though it uses your space, it's a kind of site specific event now. Mm-hmm. And uh, wondering if you, since that is the show that's up and running and you've been, yeah. you've been advertising, just briefly describe <clears throat> what that is, because I think it, it it's your most successful show. It's been running for decades and mm-hmm. it is, it's probably the embodiment of the Zombie Joe aesthetic. So uh, it is in a lot of ways, yeah. Take it um, away. Well, so Urban Death is sort of a <laughs> Grand Guignolian, French tableau, West Coast styled, um, episodic 
uh, theater show. Um, <clears throat> and there's at its at its core, it's us doing um, forty to fifty wordless vin uh, pieces, short scenes, almost like catching um, catching a short scene, like a piece of a, something larger, like forty to fifty of them in between blackouts the blackouts are as a character in itself uh while you sit there and watch this show um that's at its core that but what's happened over the last few years is urban death has expanded and so and there and it's all horror and we cover all styles of horror so mm -hmm. psychological horror highly physical horror we're really into the flesh and we're into the dark spirits and we really play with these these energies when we put these shows these shows together we have over five and janet has a list i think she emailed <laughs> we have over like five or we have like five or six hundred pieces that we've done that we've cataloged yeah plus um they're all you know there's a lot of uh there's a whole canon of music um from uh christopher reiner and kevin van Cott and other composers so the the pieces are are often scored they have an underscore written for them so <clears throat> so at its essence that's what urban death is as our sit down show that's but right Paul, that's yeah go ahead i'm sorry to interrupt please and you have covered the show several times you and your writers for stage raw and uh, for back with, with uh, Ellie Weekly, I mean, really, you've, Mr. Morris, you've really helped put Urban Death on the map. You know, you really have, and to, to the outreach. But uh, so over the last few, several years, so Urban Death is 16 years old now. It's celebrated 16 years. But we also do convention samplers, which will play Midsummer Scream. It's been two years that, that Midsummer Scream has had to not happen because of uh, at the long at, because of uh, the COVID. <clears throat> but we'll do a convention sampler. So we'll literally get a couple of we'll, we'll get their breakout rooms. We'll convert it into a performance space and we'll play to thousands of people. We'll do little 15 minute uh, uh, performances and we'll just do them around the clock mm -hmm. Saturday and Sunday. At a of, a, of a convention so that's very interesting i yeah. i i, I want to say i, I want to buy a ticket say okay and mm -hmm. i do want to buy a ticket what am i going to experience this time around when i come to north hollywood oh it's going to be completely terrifying and fuck no i'm just kidding <laughs> <laughs> mr morris actually we do we have one more weekend i hope you do come out that'd be great um we uh of this of that we this is our second week, extension week we're going to but uh, you'll come on out. You'll be greeted by me at the front. We'll give you instructions um, on how to walk the trail. It's a dimly lit trail that's occupied by by eight different stages that the lights will pop on. The eight stages, and this is in this one tiny building that you leave. Hey, who you calling tiny, uh, buddy? Yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry about that. Go, uh, in, uh, in, in comparison to most of the theaters that uh, we are, around. we're a small space, but we... We make use of every inch. And yeah, it sounds I like gotta it. say too, I mean, we're like 1400 square feet, you know, but but we make use of every inch of our, you know, and I gotta say during this, um, I mean, I don't know anything, but during this pandemic where the, where the rents were really high for a lot of these theaters, it was definitely a lot more challenging to hold on, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and so we, and we've been looking to move into, a, get a second space somewhere. Um, I'm happy that happened, you know, that didn't happen just before COVID uh, because, because of the size of our space um, and our landlord is, is, is very generous and, and supportive of us. We were able to kind of, we were able to hang on and it was, it was a big challenge with that rent racking up for all these theaters. Yes. Yes. Um, I don't know much about it, but I do know I did with, with my colleagues that were, were, were forced to, permanently shutter you know right. um so that was a big part of it it's like the rent is piling up and yeah. you know and uh but we managed to pay rent each but through, through it. i'm still an audience member and i'm gonna go mm -hmm. through eight eight stages oh for the show yeah oh yeah sorry i get I'm totally sorry I did, you know i've done in high school i did too much lsd so <laughs> i'm like i'm all over the place uh and I'm getting older. Don't get old. Uh, I'll, I'll try to trust avoid me. It. Don't I, do this. I, I, yes. <laughs> the I, group is really 
yeah. they really cut me a lot of slack. I've know. got a machine um, that turns back time, so uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm invested. Uh, okay, so you show up, you buy your ticket online, you can buy it at the door, buy a shirt, um, and uh, yeah, we'll give you instructions, and you'll walk this trail of torment, and you'll happen upon eight different mini plays, little little wordless um, uh, pieces of okay. of horror theater uh, that are all sort of interconnected in a weird way. And it's a walk through a contactless experience. Nobody it's, an touches you. it's an amusement park walk. Uh, down the you, midway, down the terrifying keep, midway of hell. I just want to clarify, you keep the groups uh, socially distant? Um, well, we let in a group of four every yeah. every um five to six minutes so your group will never happen upon another group you won't so for halloween we have larger groups that move down the maze yep but for right now uh, and you said all your company has been vaccinated fully vaccinated that's a requirement um yeah. that you have to be vaccinated um and that has its own challenges too, because they're some of our beloved company just doesn't want to get vaccinated. So that's the deal. You have to, you have to be vaccinated, uh -huh. and that's for this. That's for that. Really, we found kind of levels the playing field, so we could work without masks when developing our shows and rehearsing yes. Yes. and performing. And it really did give the public, um, and does give the public a real uh, an extra measure, extra level of safety and security. And I would say it sounds like it. And I just wanted to clarify something you had mentioned again before we recorded that your anecdotal evidence, this is from discussing with audience members, is that you believe that upwards of 90% of your audience members are also fully vaccinated based on what they're telling you? Definitely. Yeah. If not more. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what we thought was, oh, should we have restrictions? Should we be vaccinated? Should we be shown a card? Should we take the temperature? And then what we discovered right off the bat was those that are not vaccinated, they don't want to go out and do stuff. They don't want to impose that on others. We, we discovered the humanity and, um, you know, the, the courtesy of our public that uh, they don't want to impose that on us or have that be an issue for us so they don't come. Well, that's quite up, up that's uplifting news. I, I imagine it's local because I'm not completely convinced that's universal across Mm -hmm. the, the 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 country and or even across the state so well our um, audiences mr morris are are just as special as our as our company i mean they're our audiences that we've been getting to know and our supporters people that you know they'll come they'll come 150 miles to come see a a, a 20 minute show um and spend a little time with us are we're very close with our um well i mean we're definitely closer with our audiences um, and including the new spec, you know, the new audiences that we've, we've seen a lot of new people mm -hmm. uh, that we've never met before. And um, a lot of them are not, a lot of our audience are not um, necessarily theater audi going audiences. Uh, some of them have never seen a play before. You know, so they're the coming audience. to see the event. Yeah. The, the way they go to Disneyland or Magic Mountain or something. It's the thrill they're going for. Mm -hmm. A lot of them, yeah, they... Um, they don't go to the theater they'll go to these haunted events and yeah, our yeah. haunt we're so we're yeah. definitely over the last 10 years we've become a crossover uh, yeah. theater company but also a haunted attraction company very good yeah. zombie joe thank you for joining us so yeah so that's it that's the whole interview uh, yep <laughs> okay, thank cool. you thank you zj next week we are joined by Jose Luis Valenzuela, who is the artistic director of Latino Theater Company and the manager of the city-owned property, Los Angeles Theater Center. Mm -hmm.